Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to do something simple to discuss how you could basically use a transformation constraint to assist you when it comes to performing uh, procedural animation. So with our cube we'll just select it and press X and delete it, Shift A, add a plane. We'll select this one edge, press M, merge, Q, bevel, we'll just bevel, press 2 in order to reset it. And then from here press Q and add solidify, control A visual geometry to mesh, alt VE to go to EVHQ just so we have a better looking viewport. And with everything applied, we can put some loops in. And since we're in edge mode, that means that whenever we press control B and we bevel, we actually keep our selection. Unlike if we're in vertice or face, so we'll attempt to net it. But once we have our three loops, we can press control numpad minus to select the one in the middle, alt S to push it inside. Shift click sharpen to get it looking fairly good. And from here, we can just select this top face and shift click curve extract in edit mode to just extract this piece into its own mesh. So for this, we'll select this piece and we will choose to add modifier lattice. And the thing about lattice is that typically we default to B spline. However, we want to select linear for this. So that way we have linear control of our result. Um, in order to show what happens when you don't have linear control, we'll set everything back to B-spline. And as we move this down, you see the object actually coming out of the other side, which would make driving such an object repeatedly be difficult because we see that the piece is capable of exceeding the top area and also capable of exceeding the bottom area. And for that reason, you just want to set everything to linear where everything just moves exactly inside of the volume. So with all four of these points selected, we're just gonna press Control H, hook to new object, which will give us our first empty of the day. And now when we move this empty, we're moving the top four points of the lattice. So we could just hide the lattice. We can select this object, Control P, parent it to this with Control P, choosing to keep the transform. And so from here, we can have a little bit of fun I'll press Shift V and Box Cutter in order to reset to local from nearest edge orientation. And we'll perform an inset cut by just drawing a box and pressing I. Actually, I think I pressed Escape right there. Let's try that again. All right, we press B to bevel, press G to move it spacebar to apply, alt x, mirror over to the other side. So I think I got ahead of myself on keystrokes there. So we'll press D, jump over to end gun. And if you're using the latest version of box cutter, 718.8, .8, that means that more than likely by default, your circle is using a new polygon system, which means that whenever you press B to bevel, you'll get your traditional bevel that you've been used to this whole time. But if you press shift F, you get the new version that includes um, reverse bevel. So this thing's just magical. Fine addition, you know, uh, reverse beveling boxes is so good, you know, but when it comes to reverse beveling, we're reverse beveling circles, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what really matters. So now we basically have this object set up. We can grab our empty and just move things around. And this is kind of the little piece that we've created so far. So I'm going to shift C reset my cursor and we'll just bring in another empty and I'm going to right click my empty to make it smaller because just because I need to see the empty doesn't mean I need to have it humongous. I can actually go under my object properties and under viewport display, turn on in front so that way I can see what's actually going on. And this is where we get to the meat and potatoes of this. So when it comes to constraints, there's um, multiple types of constraint panels. There's the uh, bone constraint panel and the object constraint panel. Don't want to get them confused. However, in this case, we only have objects. So let's jump in and we'll actually jump to my favorite constraint that I'll always be talking about, and that is transformation. And so what we want to do is select our target. Actually, we want to, we were doing this in the wrong order, sorry. We want to select the object that we want to modify via a constraint and add a transformation on it, and then pick the object that's going to be providing us the data as far as what's going to be getting modified. So we'll leave everything on world space right now. Really, it doesn't matter because we could change the local space. There's no localized rotation happening. 
and we basically want to change the location from basically zero to 0.3 of the Z axis. We want to basically drive a interpolated motion to happen on the secondary object. So let's change all of these to Z because we're only going to be playing with Z today. And basically we want to move this maybe um, negative 0.5. And when we move our object up, we see that this is getting brought down. And because we're already at the apex of this, that means that we can continue modifying the parameter, looking at it in real time until we actually get the result that we want. And then when we move our shape down, this is what we're looking at so far. So let's say that we actually wanted to have our animation take place over a greater series of keyframes, because I'm always operating in these micro keyframe ranges. Like what if we set this to zero and 0.5? That means now I have to move this up 0.5 of a blender unit in order to get the full result of the animation. But now that we've discussed this transformation constraint, let's set up another constraint and that'll be another transformation and we'll point it at the same thing. And surprisingly, Blender doesn't have the ability to duplicate constraints. And we'll just copy this parameter from the previous constraint. But if we could duplicate a constraint, this would be one of those cases to validate its existence. So we wanna move from 0.5 to, to one. And we're mapping this to the location. And instead of moving it down by negative 1.94. We want to remove the negative and actually raise it up by 1.94. And so now we actually have this thing capable of pumping. And that is basically the result. So that was really the whole purpose of this was to just talk about constraints. And you know, you might have noticed that on this I use world space and on the first one I used local space and was talking about how because there's no internal rotation to things, there was no need for me to have to consider it. And that's because if we were dealing with a different situation, in fact, let's control and make a new file. Let's take our cube and just rotate it. And we're going to press Q and under mesh tools, we're going to use the new set origin tool to just set our origin to this area. And by dragging the line, we're able to set the rotation too. So let's just shift A, add our empty, same empty. We don't even need to see through because we got our object moved over here in space somewhere weird. So instead of dealing with the whole parent, parenting and empty and dealing with an empty, which is just a lot simpler for me because it allows for replacement, we'll just be translating the actual object itself. So for this, we'll go to constraint and put on our boy transform and the more I do this the more I realize that in fact let's leave this on world just because you know let's pretend we didn't learn a lesson or that I didn't previously mention it and what we want to do is instead of rotation um, or instead of translation let's do rotation and we want to rotate this on the local uh, let's press RXX and we see that the local x-axis is actually right here. We'll set it to 180. And this means that whenever I move the empty, it'll basically rotate 180 degrees. In fact, this is with us using world space transformation. So we could take it a step further and actually get it to behave even better by giving it the right transformation system because this object's already translated. Uh, we're dealing with the local. So now we move it up and rotate it. Normally I can get it to fail a lot easier, but you know, you try to fail on purpose, it's just not gonna happen. Blender will make a fool out of you. But now we're able to basically move this up and rotate it 360 degrees. So in addition to being able to have translation of movement being translated over to rotation, we could also do that on an entirely different axis. So we'll just move from 0.5 to one and we're just dealing with the Z on this. And let's set this to 360 as well. And for some reason we didn't get any action. So what happened? Well, we didn't pick our target for one. So let's try it again. So now we're running into failure. So where did we go wrong this time? Well, 
360 will work as a degree when it comes to rotation, but it's not going to work when it comes to translation. So let's actually change it over to be rotation. And now we have our cube actually performing a rather advanced rotation, even though all we're doing is just translating this empty. So of course you tie a bunch of these together over the course of trying to perform some basic hard surface rigging and you have some really advanced complexity that's able to be added relatively quick. I've already done a couple of videos just showing how I've been uh, using work to corner with um, drivers and constraints to uh, get a more unique result. So I won't be diving into that at this time, but I will wrap this video up. Thank you for all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.